This lecture is more about the theoretical properties of flash functions. So we have already seen that we want to achieve free much resistance, second real much resistance, and collision resistance, but the definitions were a little bit hand wavy, saying something is hard. Now in order to be more precise, we need some terms of complexity here. So we have already seen the big O notation in estimating how long the um, discrete log attacks are taking. So those were square root attacks running any time O of square root of the group order. And now we'll need some more such terms. In particular, we need the terms, uh, the term polynomial time algorithm. So if you have an algorithm that takes an input, say you take hash function or you take the, the output length of the hash function, that length is n. So 128 bit or 256 or something. Not two to this to this number, so not the size, not the uh, number of elements in the set that you're mapping to, but its length. And then if the input has length n, then the uh, algorithm running in polynomial time means that the time is polynomial in this n. Now polynomial could be n to the 5 could be 3 n to the 2, but it also can be a million and three times n to the 1000. But it means it's not 2 to the n, or 2 to the n over 2. So polynomial means that there exists a d, some degree, so that the time the algorithm takes is in O of n to the d. And we have seen in the O notation that this means uh, that it suppresses all the lower order terms and all the constants. So something is in the O of n to the d um, if the largest term, if the highest degree term is at most d, so at most degree d, and then whatever constants in front. Uh, to read out this again, so the uh, inverse e there is uh, the operator for exists. So this says there exists the d such that ta, which is the time that this output takes, is in O of n to the t. And then the other thing we often see is a probabilistic polynomial time algorithm. Now, it's a polynomial time algorithm which is probabilistic, meaning um, it is randomized. So there are two places where it is randomized. It is allowed to do coin tosses, so it's allowed to make random decisions. And it is possibly incorrect, or to put it more positively, it is correct with some probability. So a PPT algorithm means it runs in polynomial time and it makes random choices. And then finally, um, we need a term that is called negligible. And well, what you should think of is that it's very, 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 very small. But how small is very, very small? So a function is negligible if it grows slower than one over poly of so remember poly of n from up there, um, 1 over polynomial of n. So if n is, a, is, is polynomial, so there's not n to the d that bounds this, then 1 over n to the d will go small, and this is even smaller than this. Now for both of those, if you're going for asymptotic statements, you have to set some cons conditions. So for instance, for the first five, it might not hold. So the, the full statement is there exists some constant n sub c larger than zero. So that is where these things start being relevant from then on. So for all n larger than this n c, it holds that f of n is less than one over poly of n. So if it's negligible, then the upper bound is one of a polynomial, and this for any polynomial in n. So it means it's really small. And again, well, there might be constants and so on, so a negligible function for n equals 1 might not look so small, but as n grows, as n goes to infinity, this function gets very, very small. And so small we can't bound it to the point that it gets below any polynomial. Okay, so now that we can, uh, that we have these terms, we can take a look at the practical definitions that I was given for hash functions. So this is an old style, I'm not going to repeat it. What I will do is remove all the smaller font that I have there, which were these 
hand wavy arguments and even the, the normal form text says is hard and I will replace those by having precise statements. Except for the precise statements are going to take a little bit more space so the first page is just focusing on pre much resistance but I should do that that's later. Um, this is the first one where we're getting towards it. So here I'm just removing those texts and then well how do you formulate that something is hard? Now we know already that you can always well, expect to break pretty much resistance in 2 to the length, so 2 to the n here. And so what we mean by that, that something is hard, is means that nothing faster is known. So the formal way to write this is that does not exist an attack faster than generic attacks, so then an attack that takes 2 to the o, um, o of 2 to the n, that gives you the image, uh, that given the image finds a pre image. And then similar for pre image resistance, we also had this O of 2 to the n. So for pre image resistance, remember that we're given an x and we're supposed to find another x prime, not equal to x, which maps to the same value. And again, collision resistance all looks very, very similar, but we're not forced to pick an x. We can choose our x ourselves. In the second pre image resistance, somebody feeds us an x and then we have to come up with an x prime. So for this one also, there does not exist an attack faster than O of 2 to the n, that on input x finds an x prime, which is different from x, such that the hash values match. So for those two, this is, looks pretty formal. But then for collision resistance, we would like to say that there doesn't exist such an argument. Now, first of all, collisions do exist. I mean, we map from arbitrary long strings to strings of length length n. So these exist, but well, that might still be okay for, for not having an algorithm. But the set of algorithms that exists include algorithms which are really, really stupid. So the algorithm will just output any two elements. So it could either be a randomized algorithm and output two random uh, elements, or it could even be the fixed algorithm you can have just the algorithm x x prime for any inputs, well, take a finite subspace, and then you take all of those and just output them. And then one of those algorithms actually gives the collision. So it does exist an algorithm that outputs collision. We just don't know how to find it. But if you're talking about the set of algorithms, these algorithms do exist. Now how can we bootstrap from this? So one way is to say we could formalize the human ignorance. We could say, well, nobody can find or we don't know. But that's not really where we want to go with formal treatments. What is happening in formal treatments is that we're going like, okay, well, we're actually talking about concrete hash functions, so this is the correct definition. But how can we rescue this? How can we modify the definition so that we can have well, mathematically or computationally sound statements. And then we can observe that the issue with collision resistance is that the algorithm doesn't get any input. It's just an algorithm. And that's why these silly algorithms that just output two values, well, they exist. And that's why they come in because, well, it is as good an algorithm as any other. Um, the way out of this, and this is where the definitions really get long, is to turn to what we call heat hash functions or families of hash functions. So we want to keep, remove some of the abilities from the attacker. We want to have something that is not under the control of the attacker. So that we have to fix the algorithm before seeing a challenge. Now that's already the case in the pre image resistance and the second pre image resistance. But so far, it's not the case in the collision resistance. And so now a keyed hash function um, just means there's an extra parameter. So now our hash functions take two inputs. It takes a key and a message. For a reason that will become clear later, I'm also limiting the length of the message. 
Now there can be a feature, can be a bug. So sometimes you actually have that your uh, message space is somewhat restricted and you still want to have decent security notions there. But there's also a sort of practical reason that in the end, uh, when you want to achieve security, you must stop somewhere. Typically, this is like a terabyte range, so you will not casually encounter it. But it's reasonable to say, okay, strings of length up to some L of n. So L is just the function of the, uh, the, the output length. So n continues to be the output length. n is also the length of the key. And then here is some function L of n, which typically is much larger than n. But you can even have some very constrained input spaces, say you're mapping 128 bit strings to 256 bit strings. A hash function should be secure for that as well. Okay, so now a keyed hash function takes the first input, a key, and the second input, a message. Hash functions are main totally public functions, so this key is not a secret key, not a, not a key in the sense that we have seen in crypto. It's more like an index. And that's why we also speak of families of hash functions. So this key allows us to grab one of many hash functions. And the trick will be, well, this key gets chosen after the attacker has, has um, fixed an algorithm. So then we can formalize screener resistance saying that, well, for any algorithm, for any probabilistic polynomial time algorithm, uh, the probability that you can to the look, find the, a correct x prime of your algorithm, which now takes as parameters not just the y for which you want to find the uh, k image, but also the key k. So our a is given this key k index into the hash function into the family and y, then outputs an x prime, and then the probability that with all these inputs, that the x prime satisfies that also the hash maps to y is negligible. And again, this could be because the algorithm outputs invalid x, or it could be that the algorithm rarely outputs anything. So it could be that it just says, no, sorry, I'll, I'll just give up. So the Formal readout is stated below in a small point. So for any uh, probabilistic polynomial time algorithm A, the probability, that's what the R says here, that a given that given a randomly chosen key, so that's what this index R here means. So we are sampling randomly from the set of all keys. And then, well, the algorithm this A is given the K and Y. Now where does Y come from? y happens to be the hash of k comma x and x was randomly sampled from the set of all valid messages. So the algorithm a given randomly chosen key k and given y which is the hash of x comma, uh, k comma x for some randomly chosen x in the message space um, and then the probability that the algorithm outputs x prime in well, with our message space, with mapping to the right value so that h of k comma x prime is y, that is negligible. And when you say negligible, you always have to see in what parameter. So it's negligible in the output length n of the key. So this is negligible in n. So this property, pre much resistance, if you need to talk about like abbreviations and so on, this is normally denoted. PRE. So, and then the other two, so second pretty much resistance collision resistance will have similar formulas. So on the next page, remember that our hash function now takes two parameters, a key and a message, and continues to map two bit strings of length n. Now, the second pretty much resistance in this case, the algorithm is given. Uh, the key k and x, both of which are randomly sampled, and then the algorithm is supposed to output another pre-image. So it's supposed to output an x prime such that the two things hold, namely that x prime maps to the same value as x under key k and the hash function, and x prime is not the same as x. 
And then what the second parameter resistance means is that for any probabilistic parameter algorithm A, this probability is negligible at the end. So we cannot find an efficient algorithm. Or there exists no efficient algorithm. And this is second pre-match resistance, so SPR. And then collision resistance. Now that's actually the reason why we're doing all of this. Uh, collision resistance now has fixed the data flow so that the algorithm gets fixed first and then the key K is shown. So if you now come with this stupid algorithm I was sketching before, which just, well, doesn't take any input and just blasts out two values, well, now that the hash function is not known when this algorithm is picked, it will have a very, very low probability of success. So you pick such an algorithm, but there are lots of these algorithms, and so you will not get the right one. So now we are given k, then we are asking the algorithm to output x comma x prime, test that well those map to the same value, and that they're not equal. And that probability is negligible in N for a good hash function. And this property is called collision resistance, so CR. So these three properties, pre, SPR, and CR, describe a good cryptographic hash function. And now, well, with a kind of tweak of adding these keys, we can make security out of it. This is sort of dissatisfying because in the end, in reality, while we're not using a family of cryptographic function, we're using a specific function. When you look at the previous set, there was SHA-2, well, SHA-256, SHA-384, but those are uh, not a family because a family in this sense would have to have the same output length. So even though we talk about the SHA-2 family, it's not a family in this sense. It would be several SHA-2 functions that all have output length 256. Um, you can bootstrap, you can make this a meaningful definition by saying, well, okay, in my hash function, I'm reserving the first n bits of the input to a parameter. And that's where the key goes. So if somebody would have wanted to find a collision, they would have to find a collision with that key. And since that key is not known at the time that I'm picking the algorithm, well, it doesn't know how to find a collision that is matching that. It might be able to find general collisions, but once you selected it, it won't be able to find this. Now, if you have a weak hash function, I mentioned MT5 is a pretty weak hash function where it shows a prefix, a prefix collision exists. Well, in that case, if the attacker gets this key K, the attacker can still expand it. But for a secure hash function, that shouldn't be possible. 